And hello everyone, welcome back to another Roblox tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at interactive buttons, which means we will be writing a tiny bit of code, not a lot, but a tiny bit of code, just for the interest sake of looking at how buttons work and how you can interact with them. So there are different button types. You have your text button and you have your image buttons. Now a text button is similar to a text label, except players cannot activate it with a click or tap. An image button is like an interactive version of an image label. So they're basically almost identical to their label counterparts, except they are buttons that you can interact with. So let's create one of these buttons. So let's go here to where we see starter GUI, so down here. And then we add to it a screen GUI. Now this screen GUI, we want to give it an image button. So right here. So now we have an image button, as you can see here. Now, of course, best practices always say that you should rename your components, such as this image button, to be whatever it will be on this game. For example, let's say this button would display a map to the user. In that case, you would call it, I just right click here, say rename or press F2, and you will call it map button, or even better, you go display map button, whichever you prefer, I will just stick to map button. And this will tell you that this button has something to do with a map. So again, here we need to scale this button so it works on multiple screen sizes. So right here, we search for size to get the size property of this map button. We drop it down and we change the X 0 0.15 and 0. Same with the Y, 0 0.15 and zero. And then we set size constraint to instead of relative XY, we set it to relative YY. So it will be positioned or sized relative to the Y axis, which is up to down. Now this button here on a phone screen, this looks pretty good. So if we view this, or instead we test this on a device, then on a device, it looks pretty good. It's not too big, but if you're going to play with it on a desktop or on a big screen, it might actually look pretty big or maybe a little bit too big. So this map button, we can add it in UI size constraint. Now we can select that and here we could just set the max size instead of infinity to infinity, we set it 90 to 90. And this will make sure that if our screen gets too big, this will make sure that it doesn't take too much space of the screen. Now, positioning this button, we should also take into consideration that buttons should typically be within a player's thumb reach. So if we go back here to device. Now, if the player were to hold his phone with his thumbs or with his hands, then this button should be closer, like maybe here, where you would be able to tap it with your thumb. So we can apply that. So here we can just search for anchor point and that would be in map button. So we search for anchor point and here we can anchor it to X 0 0.5 and Y 1. Now currently we can't see the button. However, if we go here to position and we change the X to be 1 negative 150 and the Y to be one negative 20. Then now the button would be here at the bottom of the screen. And this should be negative 20, not 20. There we go. Now that is within farm reach. If we were to take a look back at how this would look on a phone, then that is obviously where your thumb can reach. Very simply just tap it with your thumb. Now let's get to actually adding an image here. Now an image needs 
free or a button needs free custom images applied to it. It's a normal image when it's just on the screen, nothing's happening. A hover image, if you're on a PC or something like that and you hover with your mouse over the button, it will need to display a hovered variant of the original image. And then finally, the final image for when the button gets clicked, whether that be on phone or PC or wherever. So these are the three states. You also have this when you do web design. I have a whole CSS course if you're interested in that, where you have different properties such as normal, hovered, visited, all of these properties you can apply to certain images or links. So let's take a look at that. Now here on the map button, we can go here and search for image. And now we have image and hover image and pressed image. So here for this placeholder, let's just say RBX asset ID colon slash slash 602536801017. Make sure you have this ID here. You could put your own image here, but I'm just going to use this asset that has already provided to me. When you click that, you should see this image here, as you can see. Let's actually just make it bigger. There we go. Now, let's add an image for hovering. So again, rbx asset id colon slash slash 602545487. Now, whenever someone hovers over this image, it will display a hovered variant of it. And if I let's go pressed, and here we can say RBX assets ID colon slash slash. And again, you could put your own images here. I'm just using what is given to me by default. 6025454897. There we go. Let's actually run this so we can see that. Now here, when we, we have this button, if we click it, you'll notice it changes color. And if you hover over it, you'll notice it also changes how it looks. And if you click it, it, it also does something. So each functionality is what we just coded in, or not coded, but what we added in. Now let's just style it to look a bit better because currently it looks somewhat ugly. So I'm just going to select it again, map button. And then we just change the background transparency. So here we'll see background transparency. There we go. And we can just change that to one to make the background transparent. And then let's also rotate it a little bit. So rota rotation, and we change that to negative five. That just gives it a little bit of a rotation to make it uh, look a little bit more friendly to the user. This is a completely optional design choice you can make. And now again, if we were to run it, then here, if you hover over it, you'll notice it changes color. We click it. It will also do things, and there we go. Now let's actually add a little bit of code to this. Now, if you don't know any Lua code, which is what we're going to use here to code functionality into this button, you don't need to. You don't need to know any Lua at this moment to know what we're going to do. However, in the future, we are going to use more and more Lua code as we go on. And whilst I will explain most of it, I do recommend you go watch my Lua crash course I created specifically so once we jump over to roblox it will be super easy to just get into it so on map button let's add another item we can call it local script so here we have it now this will take us into the code editor in roblox so i'm going to remove all of this here and just say local button is equal to script dot parent now what we are doing here is we're creating a variable, which is just a container. So we don't have to type this out the whole time. We don't need to retype this. We just say button instead of script.parent. Now this is selecting the button, this current scripts parent, which is map button. That is this, the parent of local script. Screen GUI is the parent of map button. Starter GUI is the parent of screen GUI. So map button is the parent of local script. We can then create a function, which is just a piece of code that will execute 
or a run whenever we call it. So local function on button activated. And make sure to have the same syntax as me because if you use other keywords here or if you don't add these brackets here or something like that, your code won't work. Again, I would recommend you go watch my Lua tutorial so you know about these gotchas you will have in Lua. And in here we can just say print, which just means put some text in the console. Button clicked. And then you can do other things here as well. You don't just need to do print, but you can do a bunch of other things here. Uh, so just do other code. Now these two dashes here, they're used as comments. And they are not read by the Roblox Lua running script. So anything in comments will not be executed. And we can just say button, which is what we created up here, dot activated. So once, and here it says, fires when button is activated. This is when the button is clicked. Colon, connect, and on button activated. So when the button is clicked, then run this function we defined here. All right, now let's play the game. Now to view this console, we need to go to view. You'll see there is this output here. We click that. You'll see here button clicked and it's actually seven times because I clicked the button a couple of times. Every time I click it, it will increase the amount of times it has been clicked. So that is how you can view the console. Currently, it's very, very basic, but it's just to show you how we will start implementing code into our game. And that is that for the basics on interactive buttons in Roblox. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next tutorial. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.